<sighs> Finally, I get to review a Canadian movie. It's been almost a couple of years. It's it's insane. What's going on, guys? I'm Tyler, and I'm here to let you know that The Song of Names is no perfect movie. And it centers around a young Polish violin prodigy named Davidil Rapoport, who's played by three different actors, and we'll get more into that later. And when he is in his early 20s, he disappears before his first international concert ever. Gone without a trace, everyone thinks he's dead. And the movie travels back and forth between his adoptive brother, Martin, played by Tim Roth, who searches for him in his adulthood, and back in World War II, where the two of them were children and young adults growing up. And I heard absolutely nothing about this movie, not even a tiff, when I could have seen it early. And I didn't know what people thought of it until after I walked out of the theater seeing this movie, feeling like I needed a breather because of the emotions I experienced, and then discovered the Rotten Tomato score, and... I'm shocked. I'm legitimately shocked because this is one of the best movies that I've seen so far this year. It's only been a couple months, but it is January and February. It is a miracle to see this good of a movie even once. And part of me was thinking about why this movie would have gotten negative attention. I didn't read any reviews because I wanted to keep my own thoughts to myself, but my best guess is, I don't know, it was, wasn't depressing enough. And don't get me wrong, we've seen war movies that have traveled back and forth between past and present to show, like, the consequences, the traumatic events, and how people have either adapted or refused to adapt to those changes. But what sets this movie apart from most of them, at least for me, was the way that the direction felt very subtle. And this isn't, the next one's a really important one. The fact that you can be the most fortunate person in World War II be as far away from the carnage as possible and you can still suffer as emotionally as any of the other victims in concentration camps or anyone who just lost someone dear to them. There's this perception nowadays that like the people who suffer the most are the only ones who are suffering. This movie is a fuck you that's not how it works and I appreciated this movie all the more for that because the whole, the ones who suffer the most are the only suffering, that's bullshit, and it's a really harmful thought to have nowadays. And I think it goes without saying, the best part of this movie is examining the past in World War II with the kids for that exact same reason. When Dobbs first taken in, he's already uncomfortable with the fact that he's away from his family, he has no idea what's happening to them. Meanwhile, Martin is already at a very uneasy position because he feels like his parents are playing favorites regardless of the situations that they're in. So there's already an understandable amount of conflict, but, but that's also how they come to an understanding. And the kids who play the 9 to 13 year old versions of the kids, Luke Doyle and Misha Handley, sorry if I got that wrong, they have to portray a lot of deep and heavy emotions that are difficult for some adult actors to portray. But these kids rise to the challenge and are just as good as Tim Roth, in my opinion. Luke Doyle, especially as the young Dov, has to show a lot of hidden pain, has to explain how his viewpoints in life are constantly changing as a result of the fact that he really doesn't know what happened to his family and he's not sure that he ever will. He's constantly changing his religious viewpoints. He feels as if a religion is like a coat. If you fall out of favor with it, you just take it off and you don't even have to convert to another religion. You could just go secular. He has to acknowledge the fact that his family is not the only one suffering, but tens of thousands die every single day. And it's why he's so cynical and morbid over the course of the movie and it progresses and progresses. Now as for the direction, Francois Girard shows that he has a talent for composing shots and blocking actors in order to tell the story. And I gotta say, Almost each shot has a portrait-like feature to them. He uses a lot of two or three shots where there are two or three actors in a given shot. Some of them are in the background and out of focus. Meanwhile, you're focusing on one particular character and the other's reactions. But the amazing thing was how often I was looking at something that was in the background and out of focus, but it was still bringing me a lot of intrigue and curiosity. That's the kind of direction that can tell you where to look without you even noticing or without calling attention to the director or the cinematographer. And I gotta give Gerard credit for a lot of the more emotional moments being told 
just for music. Two scenes especially, one featuring Dov's first violin performance in front of a crowd. If I say anything else about that scene, I'm going to give it away, but it's only told through him and another violinist playing for each other. And the other is this song, The Song of Names, and all I'm going to say is that it's told only in... I'm not sure if it's Polish or Hebrew because they're not really too specific about that. I apologize. But it's a scene that's only told through this one person singing, no music in the background, a lot of ominous background noise. And I gotta be honest, I teared up during those moments because it was such a key scene and it brought a lot of answers that we didn't know we needed about the story or about the characters. The only real problem I had with the movie is that Tim Roth's arc as an adult it wasn't as strong as seeing these kids grow up and experience these traumatic events for themselves. It wasn't until the very end where he makes his final stop in his search for a dove that I was really starting to enjoy his arc. And don't get me wrong, he was really good in the movie. It's just the writing that they gave him wasn't as strong as they did for these incredibly talented kid actors. But... Nonetheless, he did do a good job. He was very understated as opposed to usual performances of his, and I experienced a couple of other emotional moments based solely on his performance during the last half of the movie. But aside from those problems, The Song of Names is a beautiful, sad, and underrated film that examines how even the most fortunate of people still suffer immensely from life. And for that reason, I'm going to give The Song of Names a 4 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching. Be sure to let me know in the comments below if you've seen Song of Names, what you thought of it, and be sure to like and subscribe. Take care.